Hello and welcome back to the Real Estate Regroup Show. I am your host, LJ Walker, here to talk to you guys about fake IDs. I'm pretty sure many of you heard about the situation where an assassin killed the CEO of United Healthcare. Okay, I'm very familiar with the area that he, uh, where it was actually done. Because that particular street, even when it's not too early in the morning, it's not that many people on that side of the hotel. Most of the action is in front of the hotel. And I'm pretty sure, though, even though there's not too many people walking up and down 54th Street like that, I'm pretty sure that somebody saw, got scared, and they're not talking. Especially since... We're hearing that the bullets were engraved because everybody knows that, yeah, it was personal, but nobody wants to get into the crossfire. Okay. And now the other hotel, the first, I believe it was the first place that the assassin stayed at. Now that was really more of a hostel and not a hotel. Um, that's further uptown. I'm also familiar with that one as well. I've, I've attended events in both places. So that's how come I'm familiar with them. Um, plus on the way to work, uh, I'm passing them. If I take the bus, come uptown, I'm passing the hostel. So that's how come I'm aware of the whole area as well as inside of the place. Now, I would say, honestly, hostels are normally not as on top of security as hotels are, which is one of the reasons why I typically don't care to stay in any of them. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, but as many of you know, he got he was able to get through or to get in and stay in the hostel using a fake ID. Now, one of the clever things he did was distraction. The guy is very handsome. There's no denying of that, okay? And he used that to basically get what he wanted. See, in our line of work, whether you're a hotel owner or you're a landlord, you got to be very, very, <laughs> very careful of things like that, okay? Because to be honest, it happened to me as a landlord. My very first tenant actually gave me a fake ID, and I didn't realize it until I found out later he was deported. And when I, you know, look back and, you know, I was talking to several people and they were like, well, didn't you do this? Didn't you that? I said, yeah, as a matter of fact, I got this particular tenant through a realtor. It's not like he just walked in off the street and said he wanted an apartment and I gave it to him. No, that was not the case. So this type of thing, I, I want to bring this up to your attention to realize that it happens to many of us, okay? And by the way, that tenant did pay his rent on time except for like after his lease ended. So that's another thing too. That doesn't necessarily always mean that you're not going to get any money in even if they have fake identity. A lot of people, believe it or not, they come to the United States, immigrants come to the United States on someone else's ID and not their own. That happens too, but that's a topic for a whole nother video. But what I'm here to do is just give you guys some tips on, you know, what you can do to sort of safeguard yourself. Okay, well, the first thing is you want to check for inconsistencies. You know, the obvious one is, does the photo even match? There's a lot of times I give people my ID and it doesn't even look like they actually look at my picture. Or it's, it's like they just look to see the word driver's license and that's it. Or passport. But they don't seem as though they really like give me an overall look. One time though, it did happen where on my driver's license, I updated it, but I didn't update my photo. 
uh, so the police uh, took a little bit more time than usual to look me over because it was clearly a much younger picture of me <laughs> all right but yes the first thing um, to do is of course look at the photo the next thing you want to do is you know certain I'm not familiar with like all the driver's licenses of every single state but many states it's not paper anymore or cardboard it's a certain plastic and it has like a hologram in the background some have watermarks some have raised printing okay so you might want to check that now as a landlord you have the ability to check that a little bit more than a hotel a lot of times with a hotel or a hostel you're in a rush rush situation especially if there's a long line you you might feel like pressure to hurry up and check all these people in instead of slowing down and taking your time sometimes when we hurry up we miss a lot of things when we're in a rush you know so that's not the time to do that and then the other thing I want to uh, mention to you is look for typos not necessarily in the name but of course yes you want to look to see um, does the credit card match the name on the credit card match the name that's on the ID that's very important but we understand that this guy of course he paid everything in cash right um, typically those of us who are landlords we don't take cash we take we we want to look at either a check or we want to look at a credit card normally we don't take cash okay I'm not sure honestly I wasn't even I didn't even realize hotels took cash even though this is a hostel and things might be a little bit different but they might think about changing what type of uh, how they accept money nowadays especially since this particular incident occurred you know what I mean so yes uh, you want to look at those things the name not so much um, only the name as far as it being consistent with you know what's on a credit card or what have you but also the other things any misspellings on the card itself that's definitely a, get, a giveaway like instead of saying driver's license maybe driver and license is spelled wrong you know uh, may, there might be other things that are spelled wrong on that particular license or if the person is using a passport there might be something else that's spelled wrong you want to look at that and take your time and don't rush also try not to get distracted even when somebody is very attractive and even when they are hitting on you roll it back be professional stay professional and check and make sure that everything is copacetic right um the card even how the card feels you know there are certain uh, ID cards that have a distinctive texture okay to it that might be different from other cards because like in New York we have a driver's license but then we have another ID card uh, well in New York City we have a New York City ID card and the New York City ID card does not feel the same way as a driver's license does and it doesn't look the same way that a driver's license does either as a matter of fact you can't smile in the New York City ID so if you see a card where or an ID and they present it to you that's a New York City ID and you see that the person is smiling right away you should know that's a fake ID that's not real somehow some way they manage to make that particular ID uh, you also can check the ID right 
against what they fill out on paper. Because I know when you go into a hotel and also when you have a tenant apply for an apartment, you normally make them do what? Fill out an application, right? At the hotel, they make you fill out a form for incidentals. Okay, so what you do is whatever ID was given to you, you match it against what they wrote down on paper, you know, because there's a, yes, there's an area for them to sign their signature, but there's normally another area for you to print your actual name. And if the name that's printed doesn't match the name on the card, then you know something, okay? Next, there are, um, I haven't used these to be honest with you, but there are apps that can detect inconsistencies and forgery. So you might want to look into that um, so that this way it'll make it easier uh, for you to figure out, you know, who is who and what is what. Um, the other thing people say is to pay attention to behavior um, if they're nervous or if they're evasive. I would say, especially, I would not pay too much attention to nervousness, to be honest with you. Evasiveness, yeah. Um, I know, I'm noticing that a lot of times when people are, they seem like they're hiding something, or sometimes even when they snap at you for like no reason at all. Mm, that right there is a red flag for me. Because a lot of times they're those type of people, in my experience, they're hiding something. And when you're hiding something, I know something's up. Uh, now, when it comes to a landlord, we have a little bit more wherewithal than a hotel or a hostel. Why? Because we can actually contact employers and, and yeah, you do have people who will give you fake employers as well. I'm, I'm aware of that. Sometimes they have you call in their sister or their cousin who is pretending to be an employer. Okay. So that's why a lot of times instead of one, you ask for two and don't call the number. I don't call the number that they give me. I look up the company to make sure that the company is legitimate. Um, either the yellow pages phone book or the internet and I look for a phone number there and I call that phone number I call that general number and I call human resources and I have human resources transfer me to the person because I know people lie about employers same thing with previous landlords okay most landlords today not all but many of them do have a website of, of some sort. Not all, but many do. So these are the things that I look for. Uh, the other thing, of course, is the credit report. Now, I know that there are some places where there, you know, the law on credit reports is kind of swaying right, particularly in New York, but I still look at credit reports regardless. I don't care uh, what the law says. I'm not letting anybody and everybody live in my home. And also the law is different for those of us who are landlords who live in our home as opposed to landlords who do not live in the home. Okay, so don't let any realtor try to tell you anything. Always go to a legal professional and confirm when it comes to things like that because some of these realtors are only here to get money and they will lie to you in order to get your money and have you take anybody in again in order to get your money why because a lot of times when you go through a realtor to get somebody uh, that realtor gets paid either by you or they get paid by uh, the potential tenant. So definitely 
seek legal advice. Definitely, I I still use prepaid legal to, you know, give me advice on things like this as well. Okay, guys, so those are my tips as far as checking whether or not a person is giving you a real ID or if a person is giving you a fake ID, okay? And listen, I'll be honest with you. Again, just because they give you a fake ID, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to pay their rent. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're not going to pay for the room at a hostel or a hotel or a motel or wherever it is. They may still pay you, all right? And they may still not necessarily cause problems on your premises, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are not going to cause any issues somewhere else in the neighborhood or the city or the state where you are at. You want to be careful because real talk, the fact that this man engraved words of a book about how insurance companies are ripping people off on bullets this person who shot a man seven o'clock in the morning, really a little bit before seven o'clock in the morning. That says something. I Yes, I do believe that he specifically targeted the CEO, but if someone says, hey, you know, this is the guy that did it, I'm pretty sure he probably will come I, my fear is that he would come after whoever pointed him out like that. Some of you on social media, you know, even myself, I have been told that I need to be careful. But some of you out there playing investigator and you're not getting paid for it, you need to be careful also. Okay. All right. So, guys. That's basically all I have. And also, by the way, if you have any feeling as a person in a hotel, hostel, or as a landlord, if you have any suspicious feeling about anybody that comes to your property and wants to live on your property, tell someone else. If it's not a police officer, uh, some tell someone else you know what you're you're not comfortable and if you're not comfortable especially if you live on the property you you probably don't have to agree i'm you don't probably you don't have to agree to have them move in not in new york not in new york if someone gives you a fake id you might want to report it I wouldn't necessarily, you know, like just pick up the phone and call the cops right in front of their face. <laughs> Not like that. I would let the person leave, be cordial, you know, have them leave and let them know, hey, I'm looking at some other people. Some others were before you and we have another after you. And then I'll let you know whether or not I'll move forward with you or not. That's what you say. And then when they're gone... Then you can call the police and say, hey, I don't know about this person, but I'm not comfortable. They gave me a fake ID. You know, I wouldn't even say, hey, the ID you gave me is fake. Give me a real one. I wouldn't even do that in front of their face. If they gave you a fake ID, mm -mm. I, me personally, I wouldn't confront them. I would just say, look, and then I, I would, you know, ask the questions that I normally ask and then say, hey, it was a pleasure to meet you, shake their hand. But there's a number of other people that I have to interview after you. And then on such and such day, I will let you know whether or not I'm going to move forward with either choosing you or choosing one of the others. OK, so that's my advice. 
Um, please feel free to pass this amongst your friends. Remember, each one reach one, teach one. Bye for now. Until next time, have a good night.